Hello guys, in this video we will be going to see how we can implement login APIs on top of Amazon Cognito. Okay, so uh, first we will understand like why do we need this and then after we'll go inside the implementation detail. Okay, so let's say you don't want to use uh, uh, Amazon Cognito provided uh, UI. Okay, in that scenario what you have to do, you have to implement your own custom APIs. Okay. So there are certain reasons, I think possible reasons for uh, not using uh, Amazon Cognito UI. The first reason uh, would be you, you wanted to uh, develop your own custom UI, right? So that would be the first reason. Second, you wanted to implement uh, server side authentication, right? Or third would be, let's say you have multiple devices and you wanted to do something on your own custom, okay? In, in, in the login APIs, you wanted to add users in, inside the DB as well, or maybe and any other things, okay? So in that scenario, uh, those APIs would be useful. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go inside the implementation detail. Okay, so first we will be going to create a user pool inside on, on the Amazon Cognito console and then after we'll go inside the uh, Python uh, IDE and we'll see the code files. Okay, so let's create an user pool. I will be going to select the user pool sign in option as username. You, If you want, you can select email number or phone number, anything you want. Then after keeping password call policy as default, multi-factor authentication, I will be keeping this as unrequired. So let's say if you select no MFA, the code would be much simpler that we, we are going to implement. But if you select MFA, it is a little tricky, I, I will say. Okay. So for MFA method, I will select this SMS message only. If you want, you can select authenticator apps as well. Okay. Then after it is asking for self-service account recovery. So let's say if someone forget their password, so how can they recover their uh, password basically so for now i am keeping this as an uh, not selected but let's say if you want this you can keep it as uh, selected as well uh, i wanted to keep enable self-registration then after uh, it is asking for verification so i don't want the cognitive to do any type of verification required attribute i will keep this phone number as only uh, default the reason being is we have mfa selected then after we'll cl click on next, then it is asking for the email configuration, although Cognito will not going to send any email. The reason being is we haven't uh, like uh, uh, kind of uh, clicked on uh, verifying the email or anything like that. Okay, so that's a reason. So send email with Cognito, uh, just I am uh, like selecting it for default perspective. Then it is asking for the role it uh, requires to send SMS messages for MFA. So I will just write role MFA, you can provide any name you want. Then after I will click on next. User pool, I will uh, type demo pool. Then after it is asking for hosted UI, so we don't need any hosted UI. Then after it is asking for demo or like app client name. So I will uh, give this name as a demo client. Then after uh, keeping all the configuration default, go inside the advanced app client settings and in this we have to select allow user password also basically user can log in with their username and password okay so make sure you selected this otherwise the, you would be getting issues in apis okay so we have selected this then after we have token duration so let's say you wanted to uh, kind of uh, 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 the token once the user logged in you wanted to how much time you wanted to keep it right so by default it is for 60 minutes so you can reduce up to five minutes and can increase up to one day. So it's completely dependent on your uh, requirement. Then after we just click on next. So all the configuration has done. So we will be going to create it. Okay. So once this is done, we will go inside it. And now we have user pool ID and uh, uh, inside the app integration, we can have an app client as well. Okay. So what we will do, we will just copy this user pool ID and go here. And then after what we will be going to do, we will be going to copy paste this user pool ID. That's the first thing. Second thing, we will be going to copy paste this client ID and paste it. Okay. So done. Then after you have to enter your reason name as well. Okay. So make sure if you are using any other reason, you just select the correct reason. Okay. So you can copy this reason name from here. AP South one. Okay. So once this is done, so what I have done till now here is so basically uh, I am using fast API to uh, create some login uh, APIs on top of Amazon Cognito. So if you don't know what is fast API, so fast API is just a framework to create design uh, and implement APIs. Uh, it is kind of uh, really makes our life easier. So that's why I'm using it. 
if you want you can use other framework as well like flask django or whatever or any any one of your choice okay then we do have apis right so what i have done till now i have written four apis right the first one is sign up second one is login third one is verify otp and the fourth one is a refresh token basically okay so uh, the first let's understand one by one all the uh, i think we, we would run it and then after understand it okay so first we will be going to sign up run sign up okay so before that i will just re uh, start this app so basically starting this app i am using this code if name is equal to main importing uvcon and running it on uvcon server on port 8000 okay so once this application has been started what i will do i will go here and just uh, access the documentation on localhost 8000 slash docs okay so first try sign up what i will what we have to pass we have to pass username test1 and then after a random password so i will be passing test1 and test at the rate 1 to 3 okay so if i execute this i have get the message user signed up successfully so i will go here inside the users tab and i will going to just refresh it so now you can see we have this user with name test1 and uh, like email verified as no and status is enabled okay so the user has been created successfully so basically sign up is done let's understand uh, the implementation of this api as well so what we are doing is like we have uh, created and uh, like already created a user pool then after we already created a cognito client inside the client like inside the api what we are doing we are receiving username and password from the user it's an pydentic based model and uh, by using this username and password we are creating calling client dot sign up function that uh, that takes basically client id username and password and then after some of the user attributes phone number so phone number i have kept it in a different file phone.py just to just to hide it uh, but you can definitely just uh, keep it here as well so it would be something like this only string with with country code right so uh, plus 91 and then after 10 digit phone number so whatever it, it's for your country right so uh, and then after i'm just passing it okay so that's an if that's that that's done the user has been created successfully so this is the one api second what we will be going to do we will be going to use login okay so let's come back here again use login api so i will execute it so now i get 400 bad requests which says an error occurred user not confirmed exception when calling the initiate auth operation user is not confirmed okay so the issue we are getting is from the cognito side which says user is not confirmed so can't log in basically okay so for this perspective what we have to do we will go here go inside the action and just confirm this account right so once the user has been confirmed uh, if we try to log in so this time we don't get any error we only get challenge name as some sms FA, mfa and some session id okay so basically this basically uh, says that we have to complete the challenge uh this sms mfa challenge okay so uh i think we would come back onto the topic how we can uh verify this this users uh like by itself uh using uh lambda triggers we will come back to this again so but let's come back to uh or just continue this on this login once first okay so now we got this messages like challenge name sms mfa and session id okay so what we have to do we have to again i will just copy it here okay then after minimize it go inside the verify otp and then after type it out okay so what it is saying is inside the verify otp we have to pass session code challenge name and username so challenge name and session name are the one which are coming from the login api okay so this is the responsibility of front end once they got this challenge name and session they have to ask user to enter the otp and the user will going to add code and again username they will send right so i will keep this as username and then after code so code is the one that you have received on your phone number so username for me is test1 and code uh, is uh, let me check my phone number it is five five four five three five okay then after i will clean this and just hit this verify otp okay so i will if i execute it so this time we get access token 
and we also get the refresh token and we also get id token okay so whatever you wanted to use you can use it okay so let's go inside the code and understand this login api and then after verify otp okay so inside the login apis what we are doing is we are again initiating auth basically okay so we are asking cognito to initiate the uh, auth for this username with this user password okay so now let's say if you have amazon cognito pool in which mfa is not enabled so in that scenario you would be getting the direct access token and refresh token but let's say if you have mfa enabled in that scenario you would be getting an challenge to complete this challenge first okay so if you see what i have done is so i have written it if auth result so if authentication result is directly coming we are just returning the access token but let's say if challenge is coming right if we do have challenge then uh, and challenge name is equal to sms mfa in that case we have to return challenge name and the session id okay so that this this session can be used at the time of verify otp from the front end okay so this is how we are returning it inside the verify otp command again we are receiving a session code challenge name and username okay and out of those parameter we are just passing again the same thing challenge name sms mfa otp session id that we got from the login api and then after the challenge response which is again the username and sms mfa code with the user will get on their phone number and once this is done we are returning the access token the complete response but definitely obviously you can just retrieve the exact access token from it okay after that we i have also created an api for uh, refresh token so let's say this 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 token would be expires in 3600 second basically one hours so uh, what we can do when the one hour is reaching like it would be the responsibility of front end like at 50 minute or 55 minute what they will do with the help of refresh token they will again hit this api slash refresh token in which they pass only refresh token and uh, i will be initiating again auth with the refresh token flow and pass the refresh token and then in the inside the response i will be getting an, a newer token basically okay so this is how this refresh token will work so in this way kind of we can implement those four apis uh, uh, to sign up login and otp verify and to refresh token and there there could be multiple flows as well to refresh the pass to update the password or uh, maybe to change the password multiple flows but once those four apis are done you can be easily implement that okay so i think mainly that's that that was the agenda for this video and uh, uh, just one more point i wanted to discuss that is the how we can auto verify this user so basically what we can do we can just go inside the user pool properties and then after we can set up and lambda triggers okay so inside the lambda triggers we can set up sign up okay sign up lambda trigger and inside the sign up we can set pre sign up trigger so which basically says validate users when they sign up and customize their attribute okay so let's say we wanted to automatically verify all the users so we can just create a new lambda function in that uh, we will be going to uh, verify the, that user uh, just we have to i think you can just quick quick google it and you would be getting this this on the first first thread definitely so that's 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 the pre sign up trigger basically you can utilize to automatically confirm the user okay so i think that's it for this video if you have any queries or you are getting any issue just post it out in the comment section i will be really happy to help you okay thank you